So it's not even August, not even my birthday, and I've gotten a few packages this month. And so I wanna share them uh, with everybody. This package was from White Raven. Uh, she has a, a YouTube channel, White Raven's Witch's Lair, which I'll leave a link down below, but she sent me this package. Her address is in the other side. I'm gonna keep that private, but I'm gonna leave a link down below. I'm gonna share what she sent to me. Uh, she's a fellow Puerto Rican bruja. Uh, Puerto Rican witch and so I'm gonna share what she sent to me and I really appreciate the package not even not even August not even my birthday yet and and I've gotten a few uh, uh, little gifts from you know followers and friends and recommendations so I'm just gonna open this up and and say a special shout out to uh, White Raven Witches Lair again I'm leaving a link down below open it up and show you what I got Thank you very much, Mama. Okay, so here it is. Wow. Thank you, White Raven. A lot of people are going to say, what is it? What What is it? They don't get it. A lot of people are not going to get it. If you're Puerto Rican, you're going to know exactly what this is. Looks like it's made out of clay. Traditionally, these were made out of stones. This is a Taino a semi. A Taino semi were Taino, first of all, Taino were the, uh, the people who resided, the Native American people who resided in Puerto Rico, what was then called Borique, Borique, uh, before Christopher Columbus uh, came into the Caribbean, the Taino people, the Arawak, the Caribe, the Sibone, many different tribes resided within the Caribbean uh, during that time, and the Taino resided in Borique. Borique is Puerto Rico. This is a was an important a semi. Semi is a symbol of a divine spirit, like a god. Let's call it a god. Uh, and there's a lot of symbology within this semi. If you're Puerto Rican, you might know exactly what I'm gonna talk about right now. I'm gonna treasure this for the rest of my life. I know exactly where this is gonna go. It's gonna go with my Indios. Uh, Tainos, the Taino people were, very, were a very spiritual people. Uh, very little is known about their religion because, of course, the white man, they, they literally destroyed much of their religion and, and, and any documents of, of, of all their spiritual and religious things were, were sold uh, throughout Europe. Uh, but what is known or what is little known from documents uh, from people who wrote during those times, uh, the Taino people, uh, the Tainos held their ceremonies uh, in what were known as bates. Bates are, it's like a field. And actually the, the word uh, like baseball or, or, or base comes from the word bate. Actually the word bat comes from the word, you know, the baseball bat comes from the word bate. Uh, these in the bates is where the Tainos would hold their sacred arietos. Their arietos were their dances, their sacred ceremonies to the semi. This is a semi. The semi were the gods of the Taino people. So whenever you, if you ever go to Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico has a, a few uh, Taino, uh, I know of three, there could be more, but there are a few Taino ceremonial grounds. And if you ever go into one of their uh, ceremonial grounds and you go into the Bates, you will always notice a mountain in the distance that looks similar to this. The mountains is believed that the highest point is where the Sami or the gods recited. Now, there, there were four classes of Taino, uh, not people, but groups that, you know, resided in each island. The highest class was uh, the cacique or the cacica. Cacique being male chief and cacica being a, the female chief. At the time of when Christopher Columbus came to the Caribbean, there were two cacicas in the Caribbean. Uh, one in Haiti, uh, I think her name was Anacaona, and the one in 
Borique o Puerto Rico was Yuisa. So there were two female caciques at the time. At the time of Christopher Columbus, there was Aguaybana. Aguaybana was the cacique, the chief cacique of Borique. Uh, that, that was the highest class in the, in the Taino people. Then there was the Beike. The Beike were the shamans. Uh, then you had the Boitu. The Boitu were like the priests. Uh, some people call the Beike and the Boitu as the same. Uh, the Beike being the shaman and the Boitu being the priests. You had uh, the Nitaino class. Uh, the Nitaino class were like the warriors. Then there was the Naboria. The Naboria were the common uh, people, the common folks. They were farmers or fishermen. Now, around the Bates, all the ceremonial grounds were are, actually, because if you go to Puerto Rico, you will see uh, the petroglyphs, uh, which are stone structures. There's a whole bunch of them. And each of these stone structures has a Taino semi symbol carved into it, representing a, a semi, which is a god of nature, uh, other spirits, and other animals or creatures that were viewed as divine. In Borique, or Puerto Rico, uh, I know of three still remaining ceremonial grounds. Uh, there's one in Caguana, Caguana, which is called the Caguana Ceremonial Grounds in uh, Caguana Utuado. And then there's Tibes, Indigenous Ceremonial Ground, which I think is in Ponce. There's one more, but I'm not sure where that one is. There's other ones that haven't been discovered, but those are the ones that are mostly discovered. I think uh, Caguanas was discovered actually in the 70s. Uh, some man owned this property and the ceremonial ground was covered by trees and plant life that just grew over it and they excavated it and, and they found the Caguana ceremonial ground intact from the time, the time of the Taino people. So right here I have uh, some Tainos Amaracas. prehistoric maracas which were used by the Tainos eh, when they were doing their ceremonies, their arietos, their sacred ceremonies to the spirits, to the Sami. Now traditionally this is called a Sami stone or a, a it was made by usually this looks like it's clay okay but it was traditionally made by being carved into a siba. A siba is a piece of stone or a piece of rock, okay? So it would be like a semi, uh, una siba semi, okay? Or a semi stone. Uh, now in Puerto Rico, if you go to the ceremonial grounds, picture the ceremonial grounds here. Usually it's a circular ceremonial ground. And on top, around the ceremonial ground are the petroglyphs of the various uh, semis. And in the distance, you will often see a mountain, a, a, a Sibau mountain range that always kind of similar, looks similar to this. And it was believed that the sacred uh, semi resided within, within these mountains, within you know, the sacred Sibau. Uh, there's a lot of symbology with the semi stone. Uh, if you look at the top right here, I'm trying to get you to, you see it all over the place. I'm gonna treasure this for the rest of my life. But if you look at the top right here, the top um, of this, let's, let's call it a mountain, is the peak. And it's right here, this peak is called Ture. Ture would be like today, like what people call uh, the realm of heaven or what the Tainos would call the, the sky, the realm of the sky. Uh, if you see right here, there's four directions, which represents the four directions of the universe or the cosmos uh, within the Taino cosmology. Uh, on top of here, was the boyo. The boyo was the hut of uh, the supreme deity of the Taino people, and his or her name, depending, 
was uh, Yukau Bagua Marakoti. Yukau Bagua Marakoti. And some uh, call him just uh, Yukau. Uh, Yukau was the creator. Yukau was the creator of the yuca plant. Okay? Uh, but he was the creator God. Yuca was uh, one of the most important foods of the Taino. But the top represents where Ture resides, or the, uh, the, uh, the heavens. And this is where Yukahu resided. Uh, he was the, the supreme deity of the, of the Semi, of the Taino people. He was the supreme Semi, and all the other Semi were below uh, Yukau, Yukau Bagua Maracoti. Now on this side, right here, of this uh, Taino uh, Semi stone, resides the realm of Kwabe. Kwabe is the realm of the underworld, the ancestors, the opia. Uh, the opia are the, uh, the spirit of the dead, the opia. Uh, opia is the, the, the ancestors, the dead. If you see, there's a face right here. Usually there's a face right here. This face represents the Lord of Death. His name was uh, uh, Maguetauri Guayaba. I could be saying that wrong, but I think it's Maguata, Maguetauri eh, Guayaba. And Maguetauri eh, Guayaba was the semi of the afterlife. He was the chief of Kwabe, and he is represented here. Kwabe was the realm of the Opia, which were the dead, the ancestors. And also there resided the uh, Maboya. The Maboya were the spirits that came out during the darkness, uh, during the night. Uh, uh, they were spirits of, of terror. Uh, they could cause mischief. They were, if, if, if you would compare them to anything that we know today, the Maboya would be more uh, like demonic. Uh, while uh, not all, you know, some were just spirits of elements, while the opia, opia were the ancestors. So we have Ture, we have Kuabe right here. And on this point right here, uh, that is the land of the living. And right here resides Gois. Gois are the spirits of of the of the spirits that are incarnated within flesh humans the taino so you have today the realm of god the highly elevated spirits you have a kuabe the realm of the dead the realm of the ancestors and then on this side right here you would have uh, the realm of gois gois being the realm of the living At the time when Christopher Columbus and Juan Ponce de Leon came to Borique, Puerto Rico, and the Caribbean, there were many semi, many uh, spirits of nature, many gods. Uh, many islands shared many similar semi, and many had their local heroes, uh, their ascended spirits that elevated into the realm of becoming semi uh, there's impossible way of naming all the semi but i want to name a few that were known throughout the caribbean and of course i started with uh yukau bagua maracoti which is the great sky father who blesses with a yuca the yuca was the cassava root he is the creator of the land and seas and ruled over the skies and heavens. Then there was Yaya. Yaya was the essence, the soul of Yukau, uh, the earthly personification of Yukau. Uh, Atabe or Atabeira was the great earth mother, a fertility uh, semi who used her breast milks, uh, which were called BB to make uh, women fertile. Uh, she was the Sami of the fresh waters that came from her bobo. Her bobo were her nipples. And uh, Atabeira was always viewed as a, a frog 
uh, deity, uh, a deity of, 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 of symbol of fertility, uh, the frog, just like the coqui in Puerto Rico is a symbol of fertility, uh, but she's always viewed with her legs uh, stretched open as she's always giving birth. Uh, there was uh, Itiba Tahubaba. Itiba Tahubaba was the mother of the two sets of sacred twins. From her, uh, from Itiba, came the man, the man bat who brought the season of the dry weather and drought and from her came the woman frog who brought the season of rain. There was uh, by Brahma. By Brahma was the Sami, the resurrector. Okay? Uh, he brought a fertile crops. There was Bayamanaku. Bayamanaku was the Sami of the fire. There was uh, Boinaye. Boinaye was one of the sacred twins. He was an opposing force. Uh, and he was the semi of the rain and earthquakes. There was uh, Ma, Ma, Maruhu. Ma, Maruhu. Maruhu was another of the sacred twins. And she was the, the semi that brought calm weathers. Caguana. Caguana was a female semi of love who gave birth to the, some of the first humans, uh, first uh, Taino people. There was uh, Sabaku. Sabaku was the semi of the rays of the sun and the moon. Uh, Sabaku was a messenger. There was Guavanex. Guavanex was the wind bringer. Okay, and Guavanex had a son or a child uh, known as Huracan. That is from Huracan is where we get the word hurricane. Uh, hurricane was, or Huracan was the semi of winds, torrential winds and storms. And then there's uh, Guataba. Guataba was the messenger of, of, of Guabanex. He foretold of when times of hurricanes were coming. Uh, Guataba was the semi of thunder and lightning. Coatrisk, Coatrisk was the semi of waterfalls. Uh, she could create, uh, she was abundance, of course, but she could uh, create floods and torrential downpour. So Coatrisk, Coatrisk was the semi of the waterfalls. Uh, she also could create floods and torrential downpour. Uh, as I've mentioned, there was a uh, Maketauri Guayaba, the Lord of the Opia, or the dead, the ancestors. He was the, the Lord, or the chief of the land of Kwabe, the realm of the dead. Uh, there was uh, Amanu. Amanu was the semi of the nightfall and the moon. Her children uh, were the dead ghosts, spirits known as the Maboya. The Maboya were the spirits that haunted the night. Uh, the Maboya spirits could not uh, enter into the realm of Kwabe for rest and were stuck in the corporal uh, world, similar to modern-day ghosts. Uh, the Maboya could take on human forms uh, whenever they wanted to uh, and were never born into the corporal world, so they had no navel. You know, they never had an umbilical cord, so they never had, like, you know, the, the belly button. And they rarely came out during the day. Most of the Moboya uh, would haunt uh, the islands during the, the night. Uh, many, many modern uh, Caribbean Siguapa spirits are believed to have originated from uh, the Maboya. We have also a Huion. Huion was the turtle god or the turtle semi, the shown, uh, the star spirit, uh, one of the brightest spirits in the skies, uh, similar to that of the sun. Uh, there was uh, Moroyo. Moroyo was the semi of the rainfalls. Then we have uh, Sheba. Sheba would be like Seba. Uh, Sheba or Seba was the tree spirit. Uh, or the sacred tree spirit, uh, being a portal into the realm of the ancestors. And not just a, the Seba was a portal into the realm of the ancestors. Water was believed to be a portal, as is today, into the realm of the ancestors. 
and caves. Caves were believed to be an entranceway into the realm of Guabe or the realm of the dead. Uh, we have uh, Yukiyu. Yukiyu was the semi of the mountains and uh, of rainforests. Then we have uh, Opiel Guabairan. Uh, Opiel Guabairan was the night dog. He was the semi that watched over the spirits of the dead uh, so that they wouldn't escape uh, from Aquabe. Uh, then we have uh, Deminan Caracaracol. Uh, he was the great ancestor, the father and hero of many of the Taino nations. After his death, he elevated into the realm of, of Semi. Uh, and then we have uh, Mako Kakael or Mako Kael, which was a, a bird reptile Semi. Uh, and he resided within caves. Uh, and Mako Kakael. Omako Kael, uh, being that bird reptile semi and ruler of caves, uh, brought humans, the first humans from the realm of Kuabe into, although not the humans, the first souls, uh, the first Goese from the realm of Kuabe into the realm of Goese, the realm of the living. Now, if you look at this semi, it's very small. It's got the color of, a, of a, the, the Taino, not the Taino, the Puerto Rican tree frog, El Coqui, around the same size. And I just want to say thank you very much to uh, Raven Witch from the Witch's Lair. I'm going to leave a link down below for this beautiful gift. I'm going to treasure this from the bottom of my heart. I'm going to bless it. Uh, use it as what it represents. Many of the ancient beikes, the Taino beikes, the Taino shamans, use similar uh, items like this to communicate with the realm of God, the realm of the uh, the dead, and the realm of the living. Have that connection, and then have a connection with the four directions of the universe. Guakia Baba, Ture Toka, Guami Keni, Guami Karayagwe, Guariko Guakia, Taino Ti, Boma Tumbusika Guakia, Aheka Sabi, Urakangwa, Maboya Wa, Yukiyu Yan, Semina Boria Daka, Han Han Katu. Bibi Atabe, Ate Itabo Era, Kua Iba Mamona, Aturo Ayan, Guakia Itiba, Kahubaba, Akona Guakia Arawaka, Yemao, Guakia Wali, Waka Yari, Busika Guakia, Keta Uri Inaru Matum, Busika Guakia, Ahi Hude, Taiku Buya, Han Han Naboria, Daka, Han Han Katu. This is San Sista Brujo Luis. I'm just showing you a little bit of my history, of my culture, of my Taino heritage. My Taino people uh, did not die. We did not disappear like many of the history books want you to believe. We assimilated. The Spanish people were not like the French and were not like the English who brought women from Europe. The Spanish came alone and they raped our women and they had children from our women. It was from them that the first Criollos were born. Okay, They didn't bring women from Spain like the English and like the French. Uh, so they had children with the Taino from rape, uh, murdering and pillage. And the Taino Semi still reside. They have not died. They have not uh, disappeared. They have assimilated just like the Taino people have assimilated into the modern culture. Many of the Taino Semi, you may find them, uh, especially in folk traditions within the Puerto Rican Espiritismo uh, Criollo system, or even in Haitian Voodoo, in 21 Division, in Santeria, in Palo Mayombe, 
uh, in Umbanda from Brazil, you will find the semi, they have not died. They have assimilated and have taken, have taken on uh, different names. The semi did not die. Uh, and it is modern times that we, being of Taino blood, we should learn our Taino history. Where did we come from? Who are our people? What What is part of that blood that that it courses through our blood. Uh, to deny them is to spit on everything that they did and all the sacrifices that they made and everything that they, that they lost for us. Uh, to all the, the caciques, uh, the chiefs, Aguaybana, Yuisa, Comerios, Utuado, all of them, uh, this is a homage to you and homage to my Borique people, when you say Borique, when you say Borinquen, you know, you, you don't want to say, you know, you're Puerto Rican, but you say, yo soy Borique, yo soy Borincano. You better understand what that means. And when you use that word Borique, okay, where does it come from? Who were the people that held that name? Because to say you are Borique, that means you have Taino blood coursing within your veins. The Taino spirits, the Semi, have not died. They have interwoven into the Catholic spirits, into the Voodoo Loa spirits, into the folk spirits of the Caribbean. This is Sancita Brujo Luis. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like. I am not an expert in Taino lore or Taino uh, religion or spirituality. Uh, I'm just finding my way my whole life, searching to find out who I am. And, you know, by studying my Taino culture, uh, what small percentage of Taino blood that I have, that 15% or 20% of Taino blood that I have within me, that is enough for me to go back into history and honor and venerate my Taino people who are, have not died, we still exist. This is Sancista Brujo Luis. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, please share, and please leave a, a comment down below. And thank you to my fellow Puerto Rican Bruja, my Boricua Bruja, White Raven. I'm going to leave a link down below. I love this gift. I appreciate it, and I will cherish it for the rest of my life. Mucha gracita. Mucha gracia, mama. Se te adora, se te quiere mucho. Lo voy a bendecir. I'm going to go bless it. Santo Sanse, Sancista Brujo Luis.